So my name is uh, Matias Carandey, as Zenek said. I'm from Universitat Politecnica de Catalunya, which is in Spain. Um, we are uh, located in the south of Barcelona. Uh, it's in Villanova y la Geltrú. And I will be talking about my PhD research topic, which is uh, pendulum type wave energy converter systems for low power marine monitoring applications. Mm. Before going to my presentation, I would like to say a few words, as, as I have plenty of time. I would like to say a few words about my, my research group. Uh, 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 I work in SARTI, which is a, a group from electronics engineering department uh, from Universidad Politecnica de Catalunya. Our main, uh, um, our main focus topic is the remote acquisition systems uh, that we develop, the systems. We work both for the industry and the research. And on research, our main focus is the marine instrumentation. So that's uh, what we have been doing the last, uh, let's say, 10 years. Our main project is uh, OPSI. OPSI is an expandable seafloor observatory, which is located uh, at the seafloor at four kilometers offshore and 20 meters depth. And it's a test site for testing uh, marine instrumentation, all kinds of marine instrumentation. Uh, as it's just at 20 meters deep, it's operable, operable by, sc by scuba divers. And there we deploy uh, different instrumentation um, that different research uh, centers from around the world are testing. And it is a very wide and nice place to test instrumentation. Uh, maybe I can show you some images. Um, this is the observatory, 20 meters deep. Is it, is it, is it cabled? So we have uh, real-time uh, communication and power, no, not requirements of power. Uh, and we can plug up to 10 instruments there uh, that can uh, be accessible through, through, through internet. It is placed uh, nearby a um, uh, biotope here. So there's a high um, biological uh, um, activity around the observatory. Um, you can access to our, uh, to our, um, to our website. And here we offer all the data we take uh, free. So all the data we are acquiring in real time, it is accessible and you can access here. For example, you have a, a live camera, which is now it's real time images of the seafloor at 20 meters deep and four kilometers offshore. Uh, as yesterday it was raining, so visibility is not good today, but here you can imagine there's the biotope, but today the visibility is not good. Uh, we have a CTD to measure temperature, uh, pressure, conductivity, and also uh, a buoy, which is at the, at the sea level, which measures wind and waves. And yeah, that's a little bit good. Ah, we have also a seismometer and also an ADCP to measure waves and currents. So if anybody's interested on, uh, on any of this data, just contact me because we are very open and happy to share our, our data and also to collaborate with with, uh, with who wants to test any kind of instrumentation there. So that's it. That's the, that's the project or, or main project that we are doing. Let's go back to my presentation. I will... Okay. So, uh, the summary of my presentation is the following. I will start with the introduction. Then I will talk about the kinetic energy harvester device that we develop. Uh, then I will talk the, uh, about the power management that we have been uh, testing on this uh, kinetic energy harvester device. Then the design of a real-time power monitoring, monitoring drifter that we developed to test this uh, energy harvesting device. And then I will present some of the first tests that we did. So uh, let's uh, ask you a question. Did you know that 90% of the ocean is still unexplored by humans? Also, 50% uh, of the oxygen from the photosynthesis produced in the ocean, 44% 40, of the population life within 50, 150 kilometers of the coast, and other data is 90% of the heat from the global warming has been absorbed by the ocean. That gives us a very important image, a very impacting image of how important it is to measure what happens in the ocean. It's, it's our life, so it's very important to, to monitor its health. 
There's plenty of uh, instrumentation and um, sensor platforms that provide data about the, the ocean. For example, a Cailot Observatory, ASOPC, that I presented before, uh, or uh, autonomous unmanned vehicles that goes within the ocean and takes uh, data and then goes in the surface and transmits this data. Uh, autonomous surface vehicles, mooring buoys, or for example, Lagrange and Drifter, which is my main topic. Um, uh, yeah, um, Drifters. Drifters is the, the, my, my focus on my, on my PhD. Drifters are low cost, low power oceanographic autonomous devices that, fo that follows the, the current while monitoring uh, the sea state. They uh, are used in climate research, or speed tracking, or rescue operation, and they measure parameters as the current flow, the temperature, the pressure, or the wind, some that parameters. They use um, connectivity, so they send the, the data through, for example, 3G or, for example, satellite connection. And the main challenge in these uh, units are price, robustness, or most important, the autonomy. The autonomy of this device is crucial because you have to think they are free moving into the ocean and uh, when the battery is gone somebody has to go there with a boat replace the batteries and throw it again so it's uh, the costs are high so a lot of um, a lot of um, companies offer drifters with uh, solar solution which are the main uh, energy harvesting solution for this kind of units for example, uh, the Spoon Drifter from the uh, company from USA, which is so far, uh, offers uh, five panels of two watts each one that they say that offers uh, unlimited uh, autonomy in obviously some propitious conditions. Um, and there are plenty of uh, companies that offer these, these solutions. For example, Fastway or Zunibal, which is here from Spain. The problem with the, the PVs, the solar energy harvesting solution, uh, are, are white. For example, a drifter that has to be in, on the sea uh, should be not exposed to the wind because you want to follow the currents and you want to monitor how the sea is moving. So if you are exposed to the wind, your drifter will, will move uh, with the motion of the wind. So you have to be mostly submerged that will affect on the PV efficiency. Also, some latitude deployment, maybe if you are on the Antarctic, on the north of the planet, there's no uh, lot of, su of sun there, so your autonomy will, uh, will be affected there. And there's also uh, the sea that is uh, rough, and sometimes you can see something like this that you see in this image, which is biofooling. The biofooling covers the, the whole drifter and obviously the panels cannot work with, within these conditions. So that's why, why we started thinking on the wave kinetic energy harvesting. Why we cannot use the energy from the waves with this uh, high there, because we are, we are all the time uh, moving with the waves. Why we cannot use this energy to scavenge uh, in a battery and use this energy to power uh, the unit, or at, at least to, uh, to, to be used as a backup battery to recover the unit when the main battery is exhausted. So the first step, uh, the first step was when we want to design a kinetic energy harvester, the first step was to see how the drifter moves when it's placed into a fluid which are their, their motions, how, how is it moving? So we start working with OrcaFlex, which is a very powerful simulation tool. Let me see if it works. No, how can I? So we use a simulation tool, which is OrcaFlex, to, to, to monitor how, how it moves the data within the fluid. And also we use experimental data. It was also a video, but uh, to see uh, where the, the energy is placed. So if you see the spectrum, the power spectrum of the, of the energy from the sea, you see that it's all placed at the waves frequency, which is very, very slow. So it's uh, low frequencies, but the motion of the drifter, it's uh, quite higher and it has a wide range. So as you can see here, it goes from zero to three, which is different from the energy that you can see on the, on the, on the, on the sea. 
And this is energy, which is the vertical motion. It only depends on the drifter shape. It do not depend on the sea condition. Also, this is the energy, energy that we see in the rotation of the drifter, which is also uh, just dependent on the drifter shape. So uh, we have higher energy that we can scavenge. The thing is, uh, where is the best performance that we can that we can acquire using a linear shaker? Because the a bi level spectrum is wide and it, uh, it depends on the, as you see, on the drifter shape, on the sea conditions. So we have to design an uh, energy harvester that can uh, scavenge this energy. We start using in the past, that was our first uh, prototype that we did like seven years, six years ago. Uh, we used electromagnetic solutions. We did the toroidal with uh, coils, uh, spin coils around it. And it was a ball, a magnet ball that rolls inside. And it induced some energy when the ball moves around these uh, coils. Then we used uh, piezoelectric solutions. It was um, a piezoelectric that uh, vibrates because it was uh, rotating. But we didn't uh, get very good results using this. Um, solutions. Um, so, okay, the videos are not playing, sorry for that. So uh, we use, uh, at the end, we, we changed to an uh, inertial, pe inertial pendulum type harvester, which is this one. Uh, I cannot show how it moves because the video is not playing, but I will try to explain. It was a main body uh, attached to the drifter that uh, pendulates with the motion of the drifter. It has a proof mass that helps the, the main body to rotate. Then through a gear system, the rotation is accumulated on a flywheel, which is all the time rotating. And this flywheel drives an electrical generator that generates the electricity that we aim to scavenge. You have to think this is a very, very small thing. It has a max, maximum of eight centimeters of diameter. So it's very small because it has to be placed inside of the drifter. So we tested uh, on a on on the we testing we tested it on on a linear shaker and trying to see how 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 the performance was and the voltage that we get is something like this which uh, moves uh, and goes with the with the motion of the um, with the motion of the of the of the pendulum. And it's, as you see, is a DC, but it has also AC component of the voltage, and we have to try to scavenge the maximum energy of this voltage. So that's where my PhD goes to, because I'm an electronic engineer. And my PhD aims to scavenge the maximum energy that we, that we can get from this, uh, from this uh, energy. So I start working with the power management unit, which have uh, the functionalities of extract the maximum power with the maximum maximum power point tracking technique. Also the control, the control of the energy within the power management unit and the energy storage element and to supply the, a fixed voltage to, the, to whatever the load was. So uh, a little bit about that. Um, the micro generator can be modeled with a Tevenin model as this one. And uh, when we um, characterized the micro generator, we saw that it can be modeled uh, as this one, uh, a leveling equivalent, um, a model. That the maximum power point is placed at the half of the of the open circuit voltage. To follow this uh, maximum power point, we tried uh, several uh, MPPT techniques, as the perturbable observe or the fractional open circuit voltage. And we are working now on this on these uh, techniques. We use um, different uh, commercial power management units, but we are also de uh, developing our custom power management units. But for the moment, we have tested uh, with Exit these ones, the one from Analog Device, the Texas Instruments, and also this new one from EPS, which is very interesting. All of them work with with very very uh, low input uh, power and they have very high efficiencies. The thing important here is uh, we have to sample uh, as, the, as the motion of the waves is around one earth, uh, very high. So this commercial units that works uh, every eight or 16 seconds is not enough. 
And we're working on accelerating business, for example, a piece that can sample the energy three times per second. And that's very interesting on, on, on our application. Uh, the final thing was uh, we developed the kinetic energy harvester. We also developed the power management unit and we wanted to test uh, these uh, solutions on the sea or on real environments. And we had two questions here. How, how do we monitor in real time the generated energy from the kinetic energy harvested and the efficiency of the power management unit? How, how, how can we do it in real time? And also, how uh, do we emulate the sea dynamics in a controlled test environment? So we deployed a measurement system which comes on a microcontroller, which is an Arduino based microcontroller that measures uh, the motion of the sea through an inertial measurement unit that provides acceleration and gyroscope data. Also, we have uh, sensing uh, capabilities to sense the power input and the power output uh, at the power management units. We can see the power generated in the kinetic energy harvested and the power that goes to the energy storage element. And we save this data. And in parallel, we can send this data wirelessly to a receiver, which is a LabVIEW-based uh, personal computer that receives this data in real time. And you see, we placed the uh, uh, kinetic energy harvester inside Sorry, inside of a drifter prototype, where we also uh, put uh, this embedded measurement system. Uh, you can see here a picture. A picture. It is the um, the kinetic energy harvester. It's inside this uh, inner ball, and here are the electronics that take this uh, data, and we we transmit this data wirelessly. So we did uh, several tests. We already did these tests. As, as I show you to you, we started testing it in a linear shaker. Then we also uh, used OrcaFlex to simulate uh, this data and acquire uh, data of the motion of the drifter. This data of the mo of motion of the drifter, we use it to, to, to control a robotic arm to see uh, how is the, how, how, Peak is the energy that we can generate because this arm was emulating the sea dynamics. Uh, then we use a, a wave flume, which is a, a channel that uh, uh, generates controlled uh, waves. You can say, okay, I want to 0.5 meters wave and three seconds period, so you can emulate the sea state. And finally, we also did um, uh, a sea test. Now, as I imagine this video won't work, I can connect to YouTube and show the video because I think I still have one minute. So I will try to put the video so you can see at least a little bit of the things I did. See channel. Yes. So um, this is uh, the, the some uh, images of the OrcaFlex, which is the software that you use to simulate the, the sea state. This is the motion of the of the pendulum type uh, wave energy converter. Place it inside of the drifter. You see with the gears, the flywheel, and also the DC micro generator. This is the test that we did uh, on the linear shaker. There's no the micro generator here, but you can imagine it will be placed here in this last, last year and how the return. This is the acquisition system. In real time, we get uh, information about the motion and also information about the generated power that we are generated on the drifter. Some preliminary tests on the wave flume uh, with controlled uh, sea state. See the different uh, drifter places with the kinetic solutions there. This is the simulation of the robotic arm uh, that uh, emulates the sea state on the drifter. Uh, we use the OrcaFlex data to control this arm, and the arm moves as it was uh, on the sea. And this is the real images of the test with it. You see that it's moving uh, as it was on the sea, and the um, and the kinetic energy is here, so it, it's like generating energy as it was placed on the sea. And also, uh, we started to, to test it in the, in the real sea, but there are just preliminary tests and we have to keep working on that.
So I think the time is uh, over. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, again, sorry because the, the videos I had prepared didn't work so far, but at least I could show you the YouTube video, so it was uh, nice. Please, if anybody is interested on, on working with us, with the observatory or with our uh, energy harvesting uh, research, we are very, very open to, to share our information and to work with anybody who is interested to, to work with us. And here I put my email so uh, you can contact